Okay, good afternoon and welcome to the Submarine Base's Youth Center. My name is Captain Todd Moore and it's my pleasure to kick off our uh, Census Awareness event this afternoon and also a pleasure to have so many distinguished visitors to the Submarine Base come and join me up here and talk about our efforts to promote the census and, and encourage response thereof and inform our community about the benefits of the census. So without further ado, I will introduce our Lieutenant Governor, uh, Lieutenant Governor Bicewitz, would you please? Uh, Absolutely, thank you. thank you. Thank you so much, Captain Moore, for uh, hosting us on the sub base. And uh, we just had a wonderful tour of uh, the whole neighborhood uh, prior to coming here as we were looking for uh, this beautiful uh, community center. And um, I want to thank all of my partners in local, state, and federal government who are uh, with us because it has been through their efforts that we are leading the Northeastern region and the country here in Connecticut with a 66.4% uh, self-response rate for uh, our U.S. Census. And, uh, we're, we're very happy that we're doing that, but as you can tell from the numbers, there is so much more to do. Um, and uh, I do want to give a shout out. So Grattan City has a 66.6% uh, self-response rate. So you are just a bit above the state average and Grattan Town comes in at 67.3%. Not that we don't want any friendly competition. I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, okay? So <laughs> bottom line is that we have to do more uh, statewide. We need to get the other 34% of the households to come forward and respond. And so, the good news is that there's still time. So we have until October 31st, but we don't want people to wait. And the reason we're here in Groton today is that uh, at the end of last week, enumerators started going door knocking in Hartford, Tolland, Wyndham, and New London counties. Um, they are knocking only on the doors of people who have not filled out the census. So we want to let people in the state know that if you get a knock on your door and um, someone says, I'm from the US Census Bureau, uh, they're in your neighborhood. And they have badges that identify who they are. They're carrying um, uh, bags that look like, uh, they're messenger bags uh, with a US Census logo on it and they uh, are wearing PPE. So we want to let everyone know, if you don't want a census worker knocking on the door of your house, the best thing to do is just go online at 2020census.gov and fill out your census. It'll take you probably five minutes, 10 tops. Uh, and you can also call the 800 number um, or if you do want to talk to one of the friendly census workers who were hired right from uh, your own neighborhood, please do. Uh, they will be socially distanced. It's a touchless system. And before I introduce some of our really great elected officials who are here, uh, I do want to say why this year is so important to fill out the census. Uh, first of all, last year, $11 billion came to the state of Connecticut because of the census numbers. 55 federal programs are key to how many people live in each community. So millions of dollars comes to Groton, comes to New Haven, uh, comes to, excuse me, New London, and 11 billion in total came to Connecticut last year for critical programs like uh, SNAP, Medicare, Medicaid, WIC, 
uh, the federal school lunch and breakfast programs, which families have been relying on during the school year and also in the summertime, road and highway projects, Pell Grants, and energy assistance for seniors, and so much more. So literally every family in our state relies upon these programs, and for every person we miss, we miss out on $2,900 per person per year. So that's $29,000 that a school system misses out on if we undercount just one child over 10 years. So this is a really big deal for our state and for Groton and New London. Um, and let me just say that both Groton and New London have been working very hard. They both have very robust, complete count committees that have been working for more than a year to make sure that we get the message out. And that's why um, Groton City and Groton Town are uh, a bit above our average at the state level, and we appreciate all that hard work. But we're coming into the home stretch, and we just had our census workers start the enumeration process. And we wanted to get that message out to let people in this area know that you're going to be receiving a knock on your door if you've not filled out the census. Um, and the final thing I'll say is, uh, our state received a disaster designation because of the COVID-19 pandemic that we've had here in Connecticut. And we are expecting hundreds of millions of dollars in federal funding uh, to come to our state to reimburse our municipalities and our state for all of the COVID-related expenses that we had and for um, hospital funding to help our hospitals who've been um, working so hard to keep people in our state uh, safe and healthy. So with that, it is just uh, my great pleasure uh, to introduce Mayor Patrice Granatoski. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. Thank you, Captain Moore, for hosting us here today. Um, it's a pleasure to be here with um, Mayor Hedrick, Mayor Passero, Representative Conley, and members of the Complete Count Committees. Um, we are just very thrilled that you are here because it represents just how important it is for all of you to complete the census. And it is safe, it's easy, it's important. And as the Lieutenant Governor said, if you don't feel comfortable with people coming to your door and knocking at your door, please go online and you can complete the census very quickly online. And it's, it's vital to the town of Groton to keep our schools in good shape and to keep our representation that you participate. And the Navy community is vital to the town. So please um, complete the census and make your voice be known. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mayor. I'd now like to introduce uh, Mayor Keith Hedrick, who has also been very engaged in making sure that everyone in Groton City gets counted. Mayor, thank you so much. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. Thank you, Captain Moore. This is extremely important that we do this. You, you're going to hear this several times a day. You've heard it already. You've probably heard it before. If you look at the social media, either for Facebook or on our website, you're going to see uh, PSAs that talk about it. You're going to see individual shots. And like people have said, 2020census.gov. That's where you want to go if you have not completed the census already. It's easy to do, it's safe, and it's extremely important, as Mayor Granitowski said. Also, some of you out there may say, well, wait a minute, I threw that little thing away so I don't have my number. It's okay, don't worry about it. If you go online, you can work through how to get that number so that you, you can apply. Your, all you need is your address. All you need is your address, and there you go. Then you can fill it out online, and that makes it easy. So don't worry if you've already thrown that thing away, you, the letter, you can always still go online. And people are going to be coming knocking on the doors. We just recently, this last week, we did a PSA. Albert Cologne did it. It was in Spanish, and we're reaching out to all our communities but we're especially going after the Hispanic communities because we understand how important everyone is. 
it is important that everybody gets counted. And, and we cannot understate the money that goes to the programs, the federal programs that are here, and to our schools. So please participate. And we are, people are going to be coming and knocking to your doors and asking so that we can verify who's there so we can count everybody. This is in the Constitution. It's legal. Nothing bad is going to happen with this. As a matter of fact, it's against the law if they share the information with anybody else. And it's just raw statistics. So please participate. And thank you very much. Mayor, thank you so much. The reason that we wanted to come to the Groton, New London area is uh, that uh, some places in this region are hard to count. And New London is one of those places, uh, despite being a hard to count city. I do want to give uh, a big shout out to New London. They have a 56.3% response rate, which compared to a lot of other uh, medium-sized cities, uh, the, New London is doing very well. Um, and that's because they also have a robust complete count committee. Mayor, thank you so much for coming and please talk about everything that's being done in New London to get this important message out. Thank you, uh, Lieutenant Governor. And um, I want to thank first my Groton host for inviting me across the river, um, Captain Moore. Mayor uh, Granatowski and, and uh, Mayor Hedrick, uh, always appreciate the invitation. I, I think um, the success that we've had in New London, I have to attribute a lot of that to the early involvement and leadership of the Lieutenant Governor. So thank you at the very beginning of this process. She was engaged with New London. One of her first stops was in New London. And, um, and she energized us to put together a very, very strong complete count committee and that's led by a former superintendent of the New London Schools, Dr. Nick Fisher, and his wife, Karen. And we have devoted city staff to that. Uh, Ledge Light Health District is an important partner. Numerous, numerous um, of our partners in the city of New London are engaged, actively engaged in this process. The weekly um, Zoom meetings that we have to go over um, the previous week's work and to plan the upcoming week's work are very engaged and, um, and it's impressive really um, uh, everything they're doing to try to overcome the obstacles of getting people in New London counted. And we went into this energized believing that we could do a better job of getting people counted in New London. We believe we are seriously undercounted. And if you look at the reasons for that, it's easy to understand. Um, the average household income in New London is $40,000. Just think of that, folks. Our families are much more engaged in survival than they are in participating in any kind of public discussion or engagement um, in things like the census count. And for our black and brown community, which is half of New London, that average household income is below $35,000. So um, this is the situation we confront. A lot of that community um, is also immigrants and undocumented. And there's a lot of skepticism about the government's motives. So we, we have things we have to overcome. Um, and, but we've been working very hard at that and we're proud of the success that we've had up to this point. Um, and we are determined to get the message out because it's ironic that New London is a city that it's most critical to get everybody counted because our dependence on those federal dollars and our dependence on representation in the state and federal government is most critical to get the message of a city like New London to our state and local leaders. So uh, we're working hard at that and we're proud of the point we're at now, but it's perseverance and we're going to get the job done. And thank you for your leadership. Lieutenant Governor. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mayor. Mayor, thank you so much uh, for all of your hard work. Um, one of the things that we have found over the past year and a half is if we have engaged leaders, mayors, uh, state representatives, state senators who are helping 
to get the message out that the census is important, safe, and easy to fill out, that the response rate is much better. Um, and so we've been really blessed that Representative uh, Dela Cruz, Representative Nolan, and uh, Representative uh, Christine Conley have just been so active and engaged in helping us to do this. And uh, Representative, would you please come up and say a few words about what you and your colleagues have been doing? Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. Thank you. I'm pleased to speak on behalf of myself, Representative Nolan and Representative Dela Cruz. Unfortunately, they could not join us today, but they are thinking about the census right now. Um, the census is so very important, and I'd like to thank Lieutenant Governor for coming down once again to Groton, uh, the mayors, Mayor Passero, Mayor Granitowski, Mayor Hendricks, and especially Captain Moore. Um, Ten years ago, when we did the last census, we did notice that the military population was not accurately counted. So I'm so pleased that Captain Moore is making sure that we um, count everyone who lives here, which includes our, our very active and very robust military population. Here in Groton, about 20% of the students in the public school system are from military families. So while these individual families may not be in Groton or New London for the next 10 years, they may be um, doing a trip around the world, protecting us in a variety of countries. Someone will put, be in that base housing and they will have children who are in the school system. They will have vehicles on our roads. They will have needs in our hospitals, our private hospitals, the public hospitals, and of course, the base. Um, so we need to count our folks that are here so that if, if folks do move, and when folks do move, that we have an accurate count. I noticed today as I was driving over here, um, a restaurant that I'm personally very excited, I know many of the young sailors are very excited too, that the sign is going up on the Jersey Mike's today and the Chipotle is about to open. Uh, and those companies are looking at the data of how many folks from the census, how many folks live in this area. So when we know we have such a, a variety of young people who are probably looking for those quick meals just like, like I am, to know that they live here and their ages um, and that this is such a great community for um, new businesses to pop up, everyone is going to look at this data, not just the federal government, but our businesses, our health care as to do we need another hospital? Um, do we need to expand 95? What do we need for roads and bridges? All this data on who lives in southeastern Connecticut is being collected right now. And that's why it's so important if you forgot to do your census, if you threw out that little form to go online, um, census 2020, call the 800 number or answer the door when a census worker shows up and let them know who lives in your house. Remember, if many of us live in multi-generational houses, it's not just you're counting me and the adults in your house, you're counting everyone from the infant all the way up to grandma or grandpa who's living with you. So if you do have multi-generational houses, please have that conversation. You know, did everyone fill out their census? Did one of the adults forget to make sure that everyone is counted? Because this is the data we're gonna rely on for the next 10 years for our community. And we can collect it from now until October. Thank you. Thank you so much, Representative Connolly, especially for uh, reminding people that the census brings um, really important resources to Connecticut, not just in terms of the 55 federal programs uh, that it funds, but it's also the basis uh, uh, for businesses large and small to make important business decisions that will benefit the Groton, New London area. Um, we have a very vibrant southeastern shoreline and a lot of great things are happening and we know that national chains are, are looking and uh, developers are looking to come here. So this is our opportunity to uh, show the diversity and the strength that we have in Connecticut and also to show why uh, businesses should be investing in the future of southeastern Connecticut. Um, so now I'd like to bring back Captain Moore, who's going to introduce some of the important folks uh, who are here on the base, helping us to get out the Census 2020 message. Thank you, Captain. Okay, thank you, Lieutenant Governor. And uh, once again, welcome everybody to the Submarine Base Youth Center. Uh, as Lieutenant Governor said, I can't get the message out to our military families without the terrific involvement of members of the submarine base community, a few of which are gathered here. 
Uh, I'd like to highlight, uh, first of all, uh, Mr. Adam Wright, our community plans and liaison officer, the man who interfaces with all of our community neighbors, businesses, and the Census Bureau to, uh, to help us understand more about its needs and communicate that out to the wider audience at the base. And speaking of that audience, we have uh, two members of our Ombudsman Assembly and coordinators here, uh, Christy Fricke and Vicki Taylor. Uh, they are the principal means by which we get information out to the families uh, about all sorts of events at the submarine base, but the census uh, at this point is certainly one of the primary things we're trying to communicate. And if you've heard any of the message so far this afternoon, you know it's important. We've heard from many of the speakers up here about what the census does for uh, the, the state and local communities and even the military members. So if you've heard any of that message, I'm not gonna repeat it. You know it's important, but I do wanna to talk to the, the federal employees, specifically the active duty military that tend to move around a lot. And you may understand that the census is important, but you may not understand that specifically you count here, where you reside, not your home state, not where you came from uh, on your previous duty station, not where your vehicle is registered. You count where you reside. And so for our military members, you understand how important it is, and now you, ought to, you ought, should understand that, that you count here. And in so doing, you help provide all those services to the future generations of military members stationed here and your children. And we in the service know about that, right? We know about providing for the future. And so the census is all about that. It is what, what, it, what will bring the infrastructure this, to this area, the business to this area, that will make you and your families happy and, and well serviced in the future. So to get that message out uh, in the barracks, for example, we have a number of, of uh, sailors who live in barracks on the base. Those are all counted by our, uh, our, our housing director on the base, unaccompanied housing director. We have underway sailors that are out on submarines right now, deployed to, uh, to seas around the globe. Those families, they'll, they'll, they'll be counted with the help of our ombudsman. Uh, our housing center, under the direction of Donna Wilson, is involved in getting information out to the Navy housing uh, in, the, in, in the area around the base. And, uh, and with her is uh, Beacon Point Homes the, uh, the, that run that housing, and they've been very helpful in helping spread the, the, the message to the local families. So I'll end as I began by saying that this is the Youth Center. The Youth Center uh, built many years ago to uh, provide education uh, and, and care for the young children of the military members here. It represents our future. The children who come here into our Child Development Center across the street are the voters 10 years from now who will reap the benefits of what you do now in the space of five or 10 minutes. So I know that uh, the United States uh, counts on our military when the, when the chips are down and, and I want you now to understand military that you count here. So please partake in the census. Thank you. Captain, thank you so much uh, for your leadership. And now I'd like to introduce a young man uh, who has been helping us with the Complete Count Committee in Groton for uh, more than a year. He was with us when we launched the effort in Groton last year, Albert Colon. And uh, Albert's going to tell us in Spanish why this is so important. And Albert, thank you for everything you've been doing. You've been a really great messenger. Thank you. Solamente quería avisarle a la comunidad hispana de que es bastante seguro, fácil e importante a responder a este censo. Es seguro por la razón que la persona que recibe esta información toma un juro por vida que no van a compartir ninguna información y si lo comparten pueden ir hasta la cárcel. Es fácil porque toma menos de 10 minutos para llenar este censo, que significa que dura menos que hasta, que hasta ponerse a cocinar algo para a, a responder a este censo. Y es importante porque por cada persona que responde a este censo, su comunidad reciba $2,900 para 10 años, que significa durante los próximos 10 años, su comunidad recibe $29,000 
por cada persona que está contada. Y yo sé que muchos de nosotros en la comunidad hispana tenemos miedo por la razón que el presidente había anunciado de, de, sobre el, la pregunta de la ciudadanía. Pero no tienen que tener miedo sobre eso, porque esa información no está puesta en el censo. So, por favor, responden al censo. Yo sé que tienen bastante miedo, pero es bastante importante responder, porque si no, su comunidad pierde 29 mil dólares, que, eh, que vas para bastante programas, que pueden ser programas como SNAP, programas para educación, para también para eh, programas federales y bastante diferentes programas. So, por favor, responden al censo. Pueden ir a la página de internet, que es el 2020census.gov, GOV, o pueden uh, llamar al número telefónico que está puesto también en esta página para responder. So, les invito a poder, a poder a responder a este censo antes de agosto, que agosto es el final momento que pueden responder. Muchísimas gracias. Albert, thank you so much. And now it's my pleasure to introduce Eva Banal, who is our partnership specialist, and she's just been leading the charge in Connecticut over the past year and a half. Uh, Eva, thank you for everything that you've been doing. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. Everyone up here who's spoken already has made my job incredibly easy. Again, as um, the Lieutenant Governor shared, my name is um, Eva Vanell. I'm the MQA coordinator for the New York Census Region. And on behalf of the U.S. Census Bureau and as a Connecticut resident, I want to thank first our Lieutenant Governor, who has been an incredibly effective and tireless voice in our state for the last year and a half, going to every corner, gathering trusted voices, engaging all of our, working with our elected officials to bring in all of the trusted voices together to get the census message out. The 2020 census is now. It is safe, it is easy, it is important to respond. Um, I then also want to thank each of our elected officials here, Representative Conley, Mayor Passero, Mayors Granitowski and, he and Hedrick. You have brought together complete count committees that where clearly you have done your homework. You have brought together some of the best trust and most trusted voices in your communities. You have hosted census solution workshops to make sure that um, everyone understands every nook and uh, cranny of where to get a message out. And then you have risen to the occasion and gone above and beyond to engage your communities since the pandemic has hit and offered virtual messaging, continuing to motivate individuals to respond. And as we now send census takers out into our neighborhoods, we want to continue to remind people that even after you get that knock on the door by a census taker, they will leave information for you at the door if you don't open it, if you're not comfortable opening it. We hope that you will respond and go online or use one of our 13 toll-free numbers in English and in 12 non-English languages that are available that cover 99% of the non-English speaking households or those languages that are spoken or by mail. Um, it is not too late to respond. You can continue to self-respond even after census takers go out into neighborhoods all the way to the end of the 2020 census. It has never been easier to respond. Um, and it has never been more important to respond, especially in the cur current conditions or environment that we're facing right now. Anyone who wants to help their community, the easiest, most important, and fastest way you can do that is to respond and be counted in the 2020 census. I want to introduce right now, we have a, something called a mobile questionnaire assistance program that I uh, coordinate for the New York region where we are sending out our best resources to low responding communities, census response representatives. Um, here we have Olga and Joe, where individuals in your communities can respond on the spot with our CRRs, our census response representatives. We have them here today. So if anyone in this room has not responded yet, please see Olga or Joe. Thank you again, everyone, for everything that you're doing. Thank you, Captain Moore. You have been incredible for uh, assigning Adam to participate on the, Groton, uh, the city of Groton and the town of Groton's complete count committee. You have been tireless as well. I've enjoyed working with you and your team to ensure a complete count that all military families who live off base understand how important it is for them to be counted so that the resources for the communities they live in are there for the next 10 years. So thank you so much. Thank you.
Eva, thank you so much uh, for your hard work and leadership. And now we have all of these very distinguished people who uh, would be happy to answer any questions. We really appreciate uh, the media outlets that have come. Thank you so much uh, for being on the front lines. Our, our journalists, our frontline workers, and um, we really appreciate your coming and helping us get this important message out. So any questions from the media? Yep. Um, Eva, do you want to take that one, or the mayors of Groton, or Captain Moore? I'll let whoever wants to jump in on that. So I can't um, say specifically for the military personnel who live off base um, here. here. Maybe you should go over here so they can get you on the camera. So the total self-response rates that are reflected on our public response rate map, mapping tool at 2020census.gov, if you click on Groton or Groton Long Point, you can see the total self-response rate and the, you know, or any of the communities that military uh, families who live off base um, live in, that's the total response rate for the entire community. Now, uh, military personnel who live on base, who live in barracks, that's where uh, we work with your housing, the barracks uh, director, and we do something called group quarters enumeration. So um, that all gets combined, but we don't break it out specifically to just military personnel at this point. Any other questions? All right, well, we want to just say thank you to all of our uh, census partners, and uh, thank you again, Captain Moore, for hosting us, and uh, thanks, everybody, for coming. We really appreciate it.